Dr. Paz and I wanted to provide this video for you to go over your final project, Milestone 2, your draft of risk factors. In this milestone, you are going to submit a draft of your risk factors as identified for all of the major business transactions conducted by your chosen entity. You're going to analyze the income statement, the balance sheet, especially cash and revenues for any potential risk factors and any compliance issues with GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. So based on your analysis of these risk factors, you're going to devise a sampling program, whether it's a statistical or a non-statistical judgmental sampling program for your audit universe or your audit population. Additionally, you're going to recommend the most preferred audit testing procedure based on the population that you identified and more importantly, based on the sample that you identified. So let's get into the details of this project. And so if we come and download our project here, let's open this a bit wide so that we can see it. So basically what you are doing here is for your milestone two, um, and you're going to, again, we're talking about auditing and we're talking about auditing as being a valuable skill in accounting and business. And typically the odds are pretty high that an organization has to be subjected to some type of audit, whether it's a compliance audit, a federal audit, an IRS audit, an internal audit, a governmental audit, a revenue audit from the state. At one point, you're going to probably be faced with some audits. So as accountants, we're required to make these professional judgments as mandated by the PCAOB, and we're asked to do these judgments based on the financial accounting issues and the internal accounting forecasts within the organization. Keep in mind that as external auditors, we are issuing an opinion on the financial statements and on the internal controls over those financial statements. So as an auditor, we have to provide fair, unbalanced, and more importantly, materially correct information for our outside constituencies, whether they are investors, employers, employees, or independent stakeholders. So for this particular milestone, what you're gonna do is draft a memo of risk factors as identified for all the major transactions that were conducted within your organization. Again, you're gonna look at the income statement, the balance sheet, and in particular on the income statement, you're gonna look at revenues, and on the balance sheet, you're gonna look at cash for any potential risk factors and any compliance issues with GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, or IFRS, the International Financial Reporting Standards. And then based on your analysis of these risk factors, you're gonna develop a sampling program whether it's statistical or non-statistical. Typically, non-statistical sampling can be called judgmental sampling <clears throat> for the population. And you're going to recommend the preferred audit test procedure for your population. So you're going to analyze your potential risk factors for all of the major business transactions, key point here, all of the major business transactions, using the information that you gather from our first milestone. So first and foremost here, you're going to see all of the requirements. I would recommend that in your final submission, you have a header, heading one or heading two, in for each one of these. So first, you would probably have a header for when you're talking about the income statement, right? Because you're going to analyze the income statement for any potential risk factors and compliance issues with GAAP or IFRS. Then the next thing you're going to do is analyze the risk factors with GAAP and IFRS for the balance sheet. So your second header would be the balance sheet. Additionally, you're going to look at the internal controls, uh, basically for cash and revenues, what risks need to be documented, and how does this information compare to the company or industry averages or the company's past performance. Then you're going to explain the population and how you identified it. Then you're gonna look at devising a sampling program. And lastly, you are going to provide some auditing test procedures that could be used based on the sample in this situation. So you should have a heading for each of these items, income statement, balance sheet, internal controls, population, sampling plan, and auditing testing procedures. 
So that's the first order of business. Then I'll give you some specificity for each of these as they relate to the rubric. As always, make sure that you are reviewing the rubric before you submit your final submission. So basically, you're actually going to give provide a paper, three to four pages, obviously in Microsoft Word, double spacing, 12 point times new Roman font, one inch margins, and the key here is three sources. So when you're looking at the factors for the income statement, you want to make sure that you're analyzing the income statement based on those potential risk factors. Since you are going to analyze cash and revenue from an internal control perspective, you can actually use cash. The key here is to mention GAAP, so either the FASB codification or IFRS if you're looking at something internationally. Maybe you are looking, in this case, at revenue or you could be looking at foreign currency exchanges, but make sure that you are specifically stating the GAAP compliance. So with GAAP, you're going to reference the FASB codification, and with IFRS, you're going to reference the um, statement of the IFRS statement and that particular number for whatever account you're working with, if it's revenue or if it's cost of goods sold, whatever you're discussing. And that is the key here to earn proficiency. Now, for the income statement, since you are going to look at cash, then you can also reference cash here. But again, you want to make sure that you are bringing in that specific FASB codification for GAAP or the statement for the IFRS. So make sure that you are directly relating them to them or both of them, right? Because you can have the FASB equivalent or the GAAP and uh, the FASB equivalent and the IFRS equivalent. For example, in the income statement, if it's LIFO inventory valuation, we know that is allowed for GAAP, but not for IFRS. So you can have a reference to both of those and that will serve as two of your sources. Then when we're looking at internal controls, again, you're looking at cash and revenue, which you could have looked at for the balance sheet and the income statement and any potential risk factors. But here we're looking at the internal controls. Keep in mind that for internal controls, we conduct what's known as attribute testing, right? We are looking for some attribute to show that that internal control is present. For example, if you have, uh, if the organization has a policy of segregation of duties, then whoever actually deposits the cash does not record the cash. Or if there are two signatures required for any disbursements above $50,000, then you would look on that check to make sure that you actually see that attribute, the two signatures. So that's the key here. And you want to make sure that you're talking about it with in detail and in depth, because typically if you just include one or two sentences, that may not be sufficient detail. So just keep that in mind for this particular critical element of the rubric. Then when you talk about explaining the population, you do need a source for your definition. So make sure all sources have a definition. That could be your third potential source that you're citing in this particular milestone. But your population are all of the items within the audit. Right, and you are selecting a sample from that population. So every single transaction, let's say for the year under the audit for Target would be the population. Make sure that you have a source here. And again, accounting tools and Investopedia are not scholarly sources, so I would shy away from those. Then you wanna make sure that you have a sampling plan. So here you're gonna say, I am gonna choose either statistical sampling or non-statistical sampling, and you're going to give an example or what sampling method you're using. Is it random sampling, monetary unit sampling, whichever method you choose based on the risk and they have to coincide. So again, here I would say the issue that most students have is they don't actually devise a sampling plan. They just say they'll use both. So no, make a selection statistical or non-statistical, and then provide a sampling methodology, monetary unit sampling, random sampling, and then discuss it as it relates to your population and to what you're testing. Then lastly, you want to provide an audit testing procedure. So here I would recommend substantive testing of account balances or account transactions. Typically, substantive testing of account transaction is the most common test use. So you would give specificity as to how you're going to test revenues, for example, or cash, for example. One potential test for cash is you obviously need to do a standard cash 
confirmation. You would have a cash lead schedule. You possibly would have a bank reconciliation that's given to you by the client. That would be part of your PBC provided by client. So you would actually look at confirming the balances to the cash confirmation, looking at the bank reconciliation and seeing that the outstanding checks were actually cleared, the deposits and transit were cleared, for example. If you are looking at revenues, revenues are typically one of the higher risk audit items because they tend to be misstated, right? You might overstate the revenues or record the revenues in the period that isn't correct. So for example, you might conduct some cutoff testing where you select the last five invoice of one period and the first five invoices of the next period. And then you are looking at the supporting documentation, such as the sales quote, the shipping documents and the invoice to ensure that they are recorded, that the revenue was actually earned and they are recorded in the correct period. That is the level of detail that you should have when you are discussing your audit testing procedures here. Analytical procedures are typically done, which is another form of substantive testing. They are typically conducted in the planning phase of the audit and in the end of the audit. So here, what we're looking at is when we're assessing risk, we would probably be devising the actual auditing procedures that we would conduct while we were out at field work. And as always, make sure that you follow APA formatting. Your articulation of response is basically you do have citations, you do have in-text citations. If you provide tables, they are in the proper APA format. I would recommend you look at the APA 7th guide and make sure that you have the table number that if you are copying and pasting, from another document that you make sure that you actually transform that table into APA formatting, not just copying it there. But thankfully, your articulation of response is only a few points. So I hope this helps you complete the second milestone here on your draft of your memos and your risk. Thank you.